in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed your promotion is coming and they are fighting you in the office. Don't assume that the strategy is to go and open the door of your boss and shout and yell at him. After all, I'm a king and a priest. You go and open his door and say, Mr. Man, let me tell you, it's not because I'm afraid of you. I went to school before you were born. And you start saying, and the man will just keep quiet. Once you finish, okay, I'm sorry for offending you. Leave the job. I said, no, that's not leave the job. You have brought yourself into a greater calamity and greater trouble. What is the strategy for my remaining a, an executive director? I am the only Christian among 10 non-Christians. Lord, what is the strategy for survival? Most believers have not mastered, even for businessmen. What is the strategy for my profiting for this year? Are we together now? Oh, it is God that gave it power to get wealth. I know that I'll... Mm -mm, mm -mm, don't assume. The person talking to you is not stupid, ladies and gentlemen. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Ministers, don't assume that because you executed something and it worked last year. You must go to the Spirit and say, Lord, what is the blueprint for the season? This is where the danger of blind copying of things. We can be inspired and motivated by people, but you must be careful. It is always at thy word that we move, not at thy intention. Master, we have toiled all night. Nevertheless, at thy word. And they knew what Israel ought to do. Do you know what you need to do in this season to prosper? Man of God, do you know what you need to do, respectfully speaking, for your ministry to thrive? Father, mother, do you know what to do in this season to obtain the school fees of your children? Apostle, I've been getting a job. Listen, look at me, please. Uh, I'm from 2018 to 2020, they usually give me a job, but since pandemic, they did not give me the job. If Brook Cherith is dry, find out from God where else to go. Otherwise, you would die, Elijah. He gave you Brook Cherith for a season, and he commanded a raven to come there. When the water dried up, it was a sign that that season too had come to an end. Don't remain at Brook Cherith there waiting for a raven. The raven may not come every day. You need to know where the address of the widow in Zarephath. And there were many widows in Zarephath. He needs to tell you which one to meet. If you're with me, say amen. amen. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Ah. Father, open my eyes to see the formula that controls my dominion for this season. Not everything translates to your victory. The Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Have you received by the Spirit, by the sacrifice of consecration and the sacrifice of alignment, have you received the strategy for your excelling in business? Have you received the strategy for your excelling in ministry? Have you received the strategy for training your children? Don't assume that because you have children, this is how they are doing it who are the day their destinies are not the same so Manoah called and said it is not enough to know that you are giving us a child please reveal to us how should this child be trained and a strategy was given 
let his hair not be caught he shall be a nazarene unto god and that became his strategy notice when satan came to attack samson through delilah all he was looking for was a revelation of the strategy that strategy is supposed to be a secret between you and God. That is your, that is your advantage. You will tremendous power in ministry. There are things God has told me as a person. It's a unique, it's a unique dealing between me and God. That for as long as those things are kept, your relevance is kept. Samson, know what keeps your strength. If it's your hair protected jealously, it is better for your leg to be injured but that hair remains if you are Elijah if you like bab like my hair like this it doesn't carry anything because the power is not on the hair we win by strategies please hear me we win by strategies businessmen it's time for you to stop doing conventional things and go and stay with the spirit and say, show me my secret to dominion. All based on scripture, but this has been custom built for my own victory. As a man of God, you need to obtain grace from God. Lord, what is the secret that you have placed upon my life? How do I dispense the word? What is the secret that controls the working of your anointing in my life? I was listening to a message by A.A. A. Allen. And he was talking about the fact that he desired the power of God so seriously. He went and locked himself and he told his wife, Honey, you will not see me again. I'm crying until God shows me the secret to spiritual power. As if it's not in the Bible. And he went back and locked himself. And according to him, he said, God gave him seven instructions and said, For you, if you control these seven instructions they become the formula to the revelation of the power of God upon your life but men like William Branham that was not their experience and yet all of them operated in power listen let me tell you when Satan comes to attack you he attacks what the formation of your altar with God that's what he comes to attack what did God say Eve and Adam I don't don't give me your opinion. what did God say what is responsible for your enjoying the Eden life there are many of us who are about to give Delilah very cheaply the formula of your hair because there's no discernment champions are champions because there is something in their life they protect that becomes the secret not secret because it is hidden secret because of the power it controls many things in their lives there are many people if you separate yourself from worship you have separated yourself from the mysteries that control the flow of power in your life there are people if you separate yourself from prayer consecration people have their various formulas the, the spiritual combination that produce power in their lives there are people who God will make certain demands on them. Before they ever go out for a crusade, they must fast for at least three days. It is not like that in the Bible, but that is a customized dealing God gave them. And for as long as they keep it, it is a covenant that protects the purity of the anointing. And yet for somebody, he can be strolling on the road and they say, can you come and help us at this crusade ground? And he will come and stand there and that it will look like he's been preparing for it for 10 years. My question for you is, have you received the strategy that controls victory for this season? Hmm. One of the blessings of discernment is that it helps you not only to know God, but you know the ways of God. Are we together? When you go and meet a herbalist and tell that herbalist, um, sir, I'm trying to look for money for a political position or something. Do you know? He will consult with the spirit realm and come up with a strategy for you. Is that true? He will not tell you, go and give everybody that strategy, but you say that's a, based on your request. This is what the realm of the spirit has said is the requirement. Bring a goat or bring a cow and then go to a road where there are so many beggars, give to, do all of these things, and you honor that strategy and with the foolishness of that strategy, 
within the limit of divination it will seem to produce a semblance of tremendous results but when we come to god we are not interested in receiving strategies joshua do not go and knock the gate of jericho and say open you want to fight you may not survive jericho is a city that nothing comes in and nothing comes out and it is not always by your sword the fence is too thick to use sword you need to go back and find out jehoshaphat grant them access to revelation and let them know that there are times that god can make enemies fight themselves what you need is to sing it may not make sense but sing there are times that you can go and lock yourself and god will say take your employment letter don't talk to anybody about your promotion you just place it on the ground and dance around it and he said god but i went to school he said that's the problem just do what i ask you to do you will dance like a madman for one hour and god will wake your boss like he did abimelech and say why have you not considered promoting this my servant give the person double promotion or create another department and you see people envying you and the only thing they can say is you are doing something that we don't understand and they are not wrong may your life be a mystery and a wonder in the name of jesus christ the tribe of issachar they were men who stayed with god to receive strategies that is why i encourage people to go for end of year retreats and receive strategy for this ministry there are things that god has said for this year not just the prophetic word but the things the steps to take the conference we're doing in uk and it's not just a human being if i want to go and rest i don't have to do a conference i can smuggle myself there go and lie down and come back but this is a prophetic conference now you will see what that conference will become and you will know that the hand of god was upon it that it came by a rema word can i tell you when ordinary people look supernatural is because they are trading on supernatural secrets We are ordinary, nothing unusual by ourselves, except that the power we have received, the wisdom that comes from heaven, when we put it to work, it produces extraordinary results that defy the intellect. This is the secret. Please lay your hands on your head in one minute. I want you to cry for the next one minute. Lord, what is the strategy for the next level of my prophetic destiny? Reveal it unto me. Someone open your mouth and pray. Someone open your mouth and pray. Prophet, pray. Apostle, pray. Man of God, pray. What is the strategy? for the next season of my life what is the strategy for raising my children now that they, they have become teenagers what is the strategy to restore my crumbling business what is the strategy to ward off these attacks that are coming from left right and center someone pray someone pray Reveal to me. Reveal to me. The strategy for victory. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 24. Please give us verse 32, I believe. Matthew 24. Jesus is teaching now. And he says, now learn a parable of the victory. When the branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves you know that summer is near that means there are signs that can point to you that seasons are ending and seasons are beginning 33 it says so likewise when ye shall see these things know that it is near even at the door do you know what that means there are things god will always show you he said call on to me and i will answer and i will show you great and mighty things that you do not know lord what is the sign that this season is coming to an end in my life 
what is the sign that I'm entering the prophetic season of my ministry what is the sign that I'm entering the apostolic season what is the sign that you are bringing partners to my life what is the sign that things are shifting in my life he said when you see these things know that summer is near have you seen your signs has God shown you a sign that when you see it know that that child is a child of prophecy when you see that sign when you see that sign know that you will not cry again even though you may not have a, a husband he may be gone but there is a sign that i will give you for some the sign can be the coming of elijah the moment you see elijah come woman of zarephath rejoice for some it can be the sign of jesus himself dear widow at name your husband just died your only son just died you are about to go and bury him but when you see jesus coming rejoice if he's the woman with the issue of blood your sign may be a crowd passing the moment you see the crowd passing the messiah is part of them discern him and touch the hem of his garment for some the sign can be blind Bartimaeus. listen to the conversation of those who are passing you are blind the moment you hear them talking about the root of david he's the one cry thou son of david have mercy upon me hmm. woe betides a man in this end time who does not know the sign that announces the arrival of his miracle have you seen the sign that means that healing anointing has come have you seen the sign that means it's time to start church have you seen the sign that it means it, it the, the the darkness is gone he made lights for seasons every season has a light there is a sign if you have not stayed in the place of prayer to get those signs let me tell you you can abort seasons in your life and not know how are you sure that the wise men coming are not coming to kill baby Jesus why did you receive them because there was a sign that told you that they were coming to give gifts of gold, frankincense, and man. There were signs that God gave me. There are signs that God has given me now. That when those signs come, it means certain, certain seasons have been opened in ministry. So while I look up to him ultimately, my eyes are fixed like the wise men on those signs. And the moment you see that sign, that's it. For someone, God is going to give you a sign. And say, the moment you see that there is one long week of strange favor, from Monday to another Monday, favor nonstop, know that that grace is near you. That should be your time of fasting and prayer to receive that mantle. You will be surprised. Someone gave me a car on Monday someone gave me the car key of a house on tuesday aha uh -huh. you recall what the holy ghost said instead of jumping around and typing nonsense on social media that's the time of consecration lord i know that this grace for favor is around my corridor and you begin to engage based on the sign that you were given and one week becomes forever because it has landed but for someone because you do not have the discernment to receive one week will come and go and you just say, ah, what happened that last month? It was a sign. He told you, go and see that God is a God of signs. I will cause the sun to move back 15 degrees. When you see it, know that this has happened. For many of you, God has been introducing signs in your life. When you see this sign, know that the mantle of the prophetic has come. It came and it passed because you did not see it. That's why God is bringing this message. There are some of us, there are signs that God has given you to know that your destiny helpers have arrived. When the sign came, you were distracted and you were not discerning. The person God sent as a destiny helper, that was the day the devil made sure you were angry. You insulted your destiny helper, he apologized and left you. Look at your life now. Could it be that this message itself is somebody's sign? That God told you the day you see apostle teaching on this, it is because the cloud has shifted and has come to your favor. 
may you not miss out this season i'm saying it prophetically may you not miss out this season through lack of discernment and of the tribe the men of issachar they had understanding of the times it was benihin that prophesied he mentioned three fathers of faith and he said god told him that the moment these global fathers of faith go to be with the lord the last one among them was i think billy graham that the moment that guy goes to be with the lord is an announcement that a prophetic season has changed in the church there were others who were discerning so while we mourn the death of these people there were others who quickly went and said lord we see our signs it means then that there are graces and mantles looking for men there are others who were just commentators wow this man just died when you see the veil of the temple tear it is more than a miracle it is a sign that something is happening at calvary and at the grave don't just rejoice that the temple is torn discern what you have seen let me tell you i've shared with you tonight one major secret about my life my life is full of signs and of tokens that signify seasons that verify seasons there are things God told me about my life this ministry his hand upon our lives and as I look up to him I also look up to the signs and there you see the sign the moment you see the sign coming you know when to shut down you know when to prepare yourself that's why you find out that there are people who it looks like you have exhausted them and then they come up from another dimension again because they know the signs that control power again i want you to pray and cry unto god lord grant me the grace the discernment to be able to see my sign the sign that signifies seasons the strategy that empowers me please open your mouth and pray when you see this sign recognize that the harvest is near hallelujah now listen to me I'm going to give you I'm going to give you four prophetic instructions to wrap up this message these prophetic instructions came to me by revelation while I prepared this message listen to me if you follow the order of Issachar you will never be disadvantaged take it from me you belong to an apostolic and a prophetic ministry you see the advantage of the apostolic and the prophetic is that it's able to bring perspective and meaning to the word of God so the word of God does not just come to you just plainly and blindly without a point of application by the agency of the spirit you are able to walk with scripture and then bring a prophetic dimension to the speakings of God over your life pay attention these four prophetic instructions are not just for me but it's for the body of Christ this is my contribution as revealed by God these are the prophetic strategies for the times that we live in. This is true for our nation. This is true for businesses. This is true for individuals. And please, I want you to pay attention. I do not claim to know everything. We are all students learning from God, learning from the fathers. But I can tell you there are things that we have been given as an election of grace. And in as much as we honor the body, we stand confident upon the office that he has given us. So some of the things you are hearing are not cunningly devised fables. No. Is someone ready? Four prophetic instructions for this tribe of Issachar to thrive, especially in the seasons that are unfolding. The first instruction is in James chapter 1 and verse 19. Let me tie it up quickly and then we'll pray. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift
to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. This is the first prophetic instruction. This came by the Spirit to me. For you, my dear people, and then by extension for the body of Christ. First instruction, let every man, let how many men? Be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Believe me, men and women are going to lose their bishopric because of compromising on this instruction. There are many people who, if they do not manage themselves in business, in ministry, and so on and so forth, this is a time that requires high-level discernment. Be quick to hear, but be slow to speak and be slow to anger. Because there are many things you will call God that is not God. And there are many things that you will call evil. And you will not know that it is light coming out of darkness. Listen very carefully. Instruction number one. Let every man be swift to hear. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. There are many good things God is doing in your life that will stimulate anger in your life. You will need self-control to allow what is doing to come to fruition because at the end of it, you will find out that even your being thrown into the lion's den is for your exaltation. So you need a lot of self-control. This getting angry and boiling over nothing, many people will abort prophetic seasons because of the absence of self-control. There are many of us that need to trust God. Once you can just calm down, you will see the hand of God rearranging things. And then you will find out like my precious people sang, that what the enemy meant, what was that thing you said again? What the enemy meant for evil. I think you should sing that, that part for me again. You take what the enemy meant for evil. Very powerful. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Sing it one more time. Very prophetic plan. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. But here's my question. Do you have the patience to allow God finish his work? Or are you angry that you want to interrupt God? God, you are too slow. Let me show you how it is to be fast. You hear that they're about to sack you and you say, God, they're about to sack me. And he says, stand still. Stand still with five children and 11 relatives. God, you must be wicked. You are seated in heaven, there, streets of gold. And God says, all right, if you think I'm too slow, go ahead. And you go ahead and you find out it was a rumor. Your fear and anger now makes that rumor a self-fulfilling prophecy. They say we were looking for one person to drive. It was a rumor that it was you. But now that you have demo, you came by yourself as a sign that you are ready to leave the job. Hear me. Prophetic instruction number one. Dear Issachar generation. Be slow. Be quick to listen. Be slow to speak. There is something called due season. There are many of you, you preserve your honor by speaking only when necessary. Most of us, you have cheapened the value of your destiny. Your words no longer carry life and power because you have wasted it upon the ears of those who do not deserve to hear you speak. You must understand the value and the power of your words. Let your words carry power and weight that if your words actually come out they come out when needed are we together be quick to listen satan will try to challenge you provoke you to speak it takes a lot of self-control and discernment the bible says a word spoken in due season say due season prophetic instruction number one I repeat again be quick to listen Nigeria Africa body of Christ this is a prophetic word for the Lord from the Lord James 1 19 is my first prophetic word be swift to hear slow to speak slow to wrath 
Let's finish it, verse 20. Why does the Bible say slow to wrath? It said, for the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. When you allow uncontrolled anger to lead you, it will most likely lead you out of the will of God. Are we together now? Prophetic instruction number two. Is someone listening now? Obtain light through the ministry of the word. Obtain light through the ministry of the word. Obtain light from the ministry of the word. Refuse to walk in darkness. This is what God told me. Romans 15 and verse 4. Let's hurry up please. Romans 15 and verse 4. The Bible says for whatsoever things were written aforetime, they were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might find hope. There is nothing happening to you now. There is nothing happening to us as a nation. There is nothing happening to your business that has not happened before. It was written so that we may find hope. Obtain light from scripture. This is the wrongest time to depend on emotions. The believer and the spiritual man is only spiritual to the degree to which you have submitted to the word of God as final authority in all matters, regardless your emotions. Are we together? Written a four time for our learning. Psalm 119 and verse 130. Psalm 119 still on prophetic instruction number two. 119, 130. The entrance of thy word, it says, give it light. Say light. And the Bible says it gives understanding to the humble or the simple. It is dangerous to run your life and your family neglecting scripture. Light must come from scripture. More than newspaper, more than social media. This is a time in your life where you must respect the supremacy and the value of the word. The believer is not just one who is saved and has given his life to Christ, but one who has constrained his life to be governed by the word of God. Obtain light. Don't walk in darkness. Don't speak in ignorance. Make sure you have a biblical perspective to everything. And from that perspective, you act. Number three, the third instruction God gave me. Are we, are we receiving tonight? Watch and pray. Watch and pray. The third prophetic instruction that I received from the Lord. Watch and pray. Matthew 26, 41, please. Give it to us. Matthew 26 and verse 41. Jesus was speaking to the disciples. He said, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. It says the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. I'll not say so much here because I have a teaching on this very um, word. Watch and pray. Watch is a function of intelligence. In other words, do not throw your intelligence. Watch and pray. You will need the faculty of your mind as well as the spiritual advantage to resist temptation in this time. Don't just pray blindly. Watch and pray. Watch means you will make use of your mind. Your mental development will add to your stability, your preservation, and your security. Then he says pray. He didn't say pray and watch. There is a role. Your mind must understand certain things, and then you can gain higher perspectives from the spirit. For many people, we are praying and throwing away our minds. That's why even what we receive from the realm of the spirit cannot be converted to a context that blesses us. Spirituality does not ignore the place of intelligence. Please hear me. I teach on over dependence of the mind, not dependence of the mind. The mind is a useful tool as far as the manifestation of the life of God is concerned. Are we together now? In fact, the Bible says receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Watch and pray. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30, a popular scripture here. I sought for a man. Watch and pray. Can I tell you sincerely, 
I know that we are going through a very difficult phase across the nations, particularly in Nigeria. We just finished our election. There's another set coming. Believe us, we must pray. We must pray like never before the prayer ministry of prophetic intercession. We need intercession rising from the north, the south, east, and the west. Discussing issues have never really solved them. It may start the process, but there are things that we must settle from the realm of the spirit for anything that brings glory to God to be made manifest. We must pray. I sought for a man to stand in the gap. We must pray. Pray for the soul of our nation. Pray for the politicians. Pray for, I, I gave you a prophetic instruction here. I'm not going back there. I told you three uh, groups. Remember? Remember the prophetic word I gave you here? I said there are three groups we must pray for. And I'm still saying it again. One, INEC. Two, law enforcement agencies. But three and most important, the judicial, the judiciary especially the supreme court i will leave it there but you should know that i don't speak as a fool hallelujah when pray for these three entities with all your heart i repeat one INEC, two law enforcement agents that means uh, uh, police military dss three pray for our entire judiciary election tribunals but especially the Supreme Court are we together prophesy to someone say watch and pray watch and pray the person had the watch part say pray pray I believe in the ministry of prayer please do not downplay and ignore prayer when I say prayer I always like to qualify it. prophetic intercession there is a place where you pray for yourself i have taught you but right now we need to move past the realm of self-centeredness and for god's sake make our spiritual contributions to pray for our lives for our nation for africa for businesses for the program of god third prophetic instruction for the isaka generation watch and pray watch and pray number four this one surprised me because you'll be surprised to know that this fourth one came very early this morning very very early this morning that's when this came john chapter 3 and verse 31 the lord spoke to me and said tell my people to reject a victim mentality i didn't understand what that meant i mean i'm looking for serious issues what is victim mentality again listen carefully tell my people to reject a victim mentality and this was the scripture he gave me i woke up with this scripture he that cometh from above is above all all what that's the question all what all what when the bible says all anything lower than god is that all he that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. Listen, there is a victim mentality that believers have. And the Lord used a figure in the Bible and I had to study him. The man Daniel one of the graces god is releasing upon the body of christ is the that mantle that was upon daniel daniel was a man who from scripture he reigned through the dispensation of four different kings and nobody could push out his relevance listen carefully number one was nebuchadnezzar number two was belshazzar is that true number three was darius number four was cyrus four kings and he reigned through the four dispensations and nobody could throw him out of relevance now i'm not just speaking in terms of politics and all of that but do you know there are many believers today who clamor and pray 
even as touching politics, governor, house members, it is not because they really desire a glorious nation. It is because we have educated ourselves through a victim mentality that if I have my person or someone who can advocate my personal interest, I stand a chance to be happy, whether for the next four years or the next eight years. Let me tell you what the Bible says. It says, woe to him that puts his strength in a man. Daniel is that one man that came, even though a Jew, he came to Babylon. Daniel 1 and verse 8, one determination that Daniel made, that Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Because of that decision, I can begin to show you all the things that happened to Daniel. When you read chapter 5 and verse 10, when they were drinking with the vessels of, that they brought from the temple, the wife of king, Be I think that should be Belshazzar now, she began to make all kinds of noise and she called and said, there is trouble here, oh. And verse 12, they brought Daniel and they said, there is a man who has an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding in interpreting of dreams and so on and so forth. Let's go down to verse 28. We'll read to 30 and stop at 30 for sake of time. He was interpreting the handwriting on the wall. Mene, mene. It says, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians, 29 and commanded Belshazzar and they clothed Daniel, they clothed Daniel with a scarlet and all of those things happened. Look at what happened in verse 30. The Bible says that night was Belshazzar the king slain. 31, the last verse says, and Darius the Median took the kingdom. He prophesied, oh king, you have been weighed and you have been found wanting. The Bible says that night the king was slain. And when Darius came, if somebody prophesied and somebody died and you come, it will be stupid for you to throw that person away. Let me tell you the truth. Depending, I'm saying this responsibly, depending on any businessman, politician, uh, what they call it, captain of industry, to magically change your life because of the sympathy and affiliation of bloodline and the rest, you are already practicing idolatry not knowing. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Believe me when I tell you this. God uses men. But please hear me believers and hear the word of the Lord. I am telling you take away a victim mentality. You come from above. And whether you are in Russia, you are in America, you are in Nigeria, you are in the north, south, east and west. Provided you are in the will of God. The Bible says, thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Shout, I can never be a victim. Let the devil hear you, I can never be a victim. Carry that mentality. There is no business structure. There is no political party whatsoever. When you advocate righteousness, it's because of the purposes of God. Not fear that your interest would have been sabotaged. No. Because your economy is driven from heaven and by heaven. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Yes. That is the reason why you find people having a lot of balloon success. Under a particular government or dispensation, say, they will reign and thrive and do well. And then another government will come and you find out that they go down. Not Daniel. From chapter 1, chapter 5, chapter 6, Daniel only kept going upward and forward and moving and excelling. Even in Egypt, Isaac sowed in that land and received that same year and hundredfold and all kinds of increases came to his life. Can I tell you, it is a mentality I have carried as a person is a mentality I have carried as a man of God, is a mentality I have carried as a leader that I can never be disadvantaged. This is not some Pentecostal gibberish. I have indoctrinated myself to believe that one with Christ is not only a majority, is victory, victory personified. I carry the spirit of the living God 
I live by the word of God. I submit to the governing authority of the king. No. If you carry a victim mentality, people started carrying victim mentality more formally from after the pandemic. In fact, during the pandemic, there are businesses that had no business crashing, but because they carried a victim mentality, people keep endorsing failure and give all kinds of flimsy excuses. I'm, I'm an empathetic person. I'm not speaking irresponsibly, but let me tell you, you must, you must gird up your loins tonight and receive this prophetic word and say no excuses for failure again. I am not a victim. The Bible declares that he that cometh from above. Many people right now in Nigeria, there are battles for or against different political parties, you know, from presidency down. And I can submit to you that there are people who are pursuing the cause of righteousness. They have the track record, they have the antecedents, and there are people that we, we love and honor. But there are people who are largely pursuing their interest. When you see people begin to clamor, it's because where they think money will pour from has now been closed. And they can't afford to have it closed that long. The Lord is my shepherd. The Bible did not say the Lord is shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He may not be our shepherd. I don't know what you believe. But the Lord is my shepherd. Somebody say my shepherd. Thank God for the government. But I've said it. And you know that I, I love people. I love the body of Christ. I'm not a politician. But let me tell you. There is no government, I don't care what political party, that will magically solve the problem of any nation like that. The Bible says, blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord. The Lord first before the leadership. Thank God for the prophetic words. We'll continue to do our due diligence in guiding God's people towards that which God says. But let me submit to you. Putting your strength in men. God uses men. But all blessings come from God through man to man. Some of you now, maybe your uncles lost election. Some of you right now, maybe your, your loved ones, maybe your brothers, maybe, and you are now wondering, where will my house rent come from? He would have allowed me to finish. Now my building is at Lintel level. Will I leave it for eight years? No, don't think like that fourth prophetic instruction i am not a victim i come from above i obtained the mantle that was upon daniel that made nebuchadnezzar to recognize and honor him the mantle that was upon him are we together that made um king belshazzar darius and cyrus all of them in fact when you read modern history it says he reigned more than just those four kings he reigned in total of about eight kings it's just that we have four recorded according to the account of daniel i cannot be a victim no i refuse i reject i cannot be a victim not in any nation i don't need to know the president of a nation to thrive it is an advantage if i get to know him but if i enter that nation he said blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord comes by that office this is the mentality that i carry thank god for the advantage of relationships to businessmen politicians captains of industry etc etc but i submit to you by the authority of god's kingdom the basis for my confidence is never any connection to men and systems it is that the god of heaven who rules above all he's still alive reject a victim mentality stop asking questions now my uncle lost election now this one happened now i did not do this uh, is this how my life don't speak like that he that cometh from above is above all and since i come from above i declare let the devil let the cosmos know that i am from above defended by the jealousy of elohim are we together this is how much he loves me you must have that mindset i don't know about you but I, I have been indoctrinated by the love of jesus towards me it's as if i'm the only one he loves on earth and don't you think this is a preacher sermon i took time to get the revelation of the love of jesus to sink into my spirit no shadow you will light up 
Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me No wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me No shadow you won't light up No shadow you won't light up And of the sons of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the time and they knew what Israel ought to do. There were 200 of them and the Bible says that their brethren were at their command. So when men say there is a casting down, they find out that your mentality and your conversation is different. There are people already now saying, ah, which government will come into power now? Is it this? Is it that? We're in trouble. Why will you call yourself grasshoppers when he did not call you a grasshopper? No. Caleb said, let us go up as once. We are well able. We are well able. As far as the purposes of God is concerned, my precious people sang it for you that no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. Do you not believe that? Make reference to my teaching, exceeding great and precious promises. The Bible says that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. I am a victor, never a victim. In the name of Jesus, Koinonia is victorious. Even in the midst of the flood, we are taken by the Spirit and kept upon Mount Ararat way far beyond any limitation that no enchantment and no divination against you will try do you believe that carry that mentality take away fear from your life oh I didn't get visa to go to to, to relocate to Canada or to relocate to America or to relocate to UK in this Nigeria again I'm finished don't say such things you are finished means what Jesus already said it for you so you don't say it again <laughs> finished no do you believe what I taught you tonight That number one, you must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Can I tell you, if you have the spirit of anger, it is demonic. Even all of us in our family, yes, I respect you, but it's demonic. Make sure you start doing something about it from now. It is a demonic thing. Uncontrolled anger. Me, eh? That's how we are. Once we are angry, even God knows. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Don't call God inside. If it needs you to work on it, humble yourself and say, this is a wicked spirit. There are many of you, anger is the reason why you may not enter the promised land. You know what stopped Moses from entering the promised land? Anger. Even with the height of his encounter, you will think a man who spent more than 90 days with God face to face, anger will automatically evaporate from him. There are many things that will try to agitate you so that you abort your prophetic destiny. But remember this sermon. When you want to speak, you just remember. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Number two, you must contend for light that comes from scripture. Be careful with opinions, even popular opinions. Once it is not rooted in scripture, it does not have any potency to create any change as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned. For the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 3, it says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Is that in your Bible? Yeah. All things were made by him, including your life. If you ignore the word of God, you have put yourself at a point of risk. Number three prophetic instruction I gave you after the order of Issachar is that you must watch and pray. You must cry for the grace to be discerning. Don't allow things to happen around you and then you do not sustain the seeing eye and the hearing ear. And number four, you must reject a victim mentality. 
he said now thanks be to god which causes us always to triumph is that true he says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith nay in all these things he says we are more than conqueror we are more than conquerors so you do not carry a victim mentality thank god for the prophetic things that are playing around and playing out in government but whatever happens happens minus fear in your life mm -mm. Fear cannot be the reason why you are advocating. Or, no, no. Your confidence should be settled that you are protected by the jealousy of Elohim. Is that true? That when men say there is a casting down, don't let people start speaking some of these proverbs and why saying, we we'll all eat our fingers. Tell the person, I love you, I respect you, but it is not in the Bible. I do not believe what you are saying. It is minus me. What the Bible says is that when men say there is a casting down, see, I have taught you that every time there was famine in scripture there are there were two people in the bible who did not suffer famine number one was the king number two was the prophet the priest priesthood and kingship were immune from famine and the bible says according to revelations 5 and verse 10 that you have been made unto our god kings and priests you are both choose anyone you will still survive Are we together nobody can cut short my life when it is not my time no the immunity of my assignment that's what they call diplomatic immunity it covers you and preserves you when it is time like Jesus Christ you pour yourself like a drink offering but not out of fear we do the things that we do full of confidence not the fear of death but knowing that longevity is your inheritance in Christ and you can place a demand upon it by faith. The times and the seasons should not make you poor. Don't believe it. Don't. Don't believe it. For the path of the just, the Bible declares it as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day. That's what the Bible says. Apostle, but there is darkness everywhere. The Bible says God can cause light to come out of darkness, not just into darkness. Even in darkness, he can still manufacture light. There's no excuse for remaining down. No. Man of God, don't say ministry will go down. You know the way people are, people will be afraid. There is no such thing as that. Your realities are defined by your spiritual orientation. Are we together now? The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of them that published it. Can we stop here for tonight? Please rise up on your feet. This is what I believe. And of the sons of Issachar. Now please lend me your attention and let's do some two or three minutes prayer and then we're done. The first prayer is a repetition of a prayer that you prayed earlier on. That God will grant you the grace to discern the prophetic seasons you are in and the seasons that are about to unfold for you. And then you may also want to add that the Lord will grant you access to the strategy. I repeat the strategy again for the season. Lord, what do I need to do? When the wise man came to Jesus, the rich young ruler, he said, good master, what do I need to do to be saved? He knew as a rich young ruler that there was always a strategy for victory. Lord, what is the strategy you are bringing for my victory? Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Begin to pray. One minute. Pray. The strategy that is allocated for my dominion in this season, I obtain grace. The strategy that is allocated for my dominion in this season, I obtain grace. Hallelujah. We are going to take the last prayer point and as always, as a responsible apostolic and prophetic ministry, we are going to pray for Nigeria. I gave you a prophetic word last week and I told you 
you have handed over this nation to God I want you to relax if you don't trust yourself trust God are we together now we are going to pray for this nation we must raise our voices and decree and declare that in the name of Jesus the counsel of the Lord will stand and we are going to speak over the election that is coming and decree and declare there will be no bloodshed loss of lives and that God will arise in his power and see that his purposes are established upon our nation lift your voice and pray pray passionately and responsibly as a believer someone is praying passionately and responsibly your mercy speaks over our land in the name of jesus nigeria we decree and declare that you must be a manifestation of god's prophetic agenda in the name of jesus the son of the living god we prophesy over the elections coming father we pray that you protect and preserve your people in the name of jesus let there be no bloodshed by the power of the holy ghost preserve your people by the power of the holy spirit and lord we pray for our dear nation let your purposes and your purposes alone stand let your purposes and your purposes alone be birthed in the name of jesus we thwart every plan and every counsel of the wicked in the name of jesus we pray for INEC. we pray for the law enforcement agencies and we pray in the name of jesus christ for the judiciary especially the supreme court lord grant grace by the power of the holy spirit your counsel for this land stands your counsel for nigeria stands your counsel for the 36 states stand your counsel for the six geopolitical zones stand in the name of jesus satan you have lost it over our nation you have no power to enforce any agenda of darkness it is the purpose of god for nigeria that stands in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ as we wrap up let me speak over your life i believe in the power of the prophetic i believe in its ability to program a climate of spiritual possibilities and it is the assignment of the prophetic and even priesthood to speak and declare over god's people it's important to receive the blessing with all your heart these are not mere speakings of a man's word it is as inspired by the holy spirit I want to speak over everyone here the arrows of bloodshed the arrows of bloodshed over you and over your loved ones we command it returns back to hell no one no one under the sound of my voice will be a victim of bloodshed Number two, everybody connected to you by physical descent or by responsibility for your sake, I declare that they are supernaturally preserved. In the name of Jesus, I pray over your finances. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I cry by God that this night, may help arise for you from his sanctuary may help arise for you from his sanctuary you will not beg in the name of jesus god will use men god will use systems to make for your supplies number four i decree and declare that even in this season hear me koinonia nothing dies in your hand nothing dies in your hands in the mighty name of Jesus if there is anybody here appointed unto death that there is any manifestation of a curse or any manipulation of the spirit of death that in the realm of the spirit they've concluded over you or your children whether through the elections or any other means 
I knock on the door of death and I command it to be far from you far from your habitation hallelujah every time there is famine every time there is economic and political turbulence one of the mysteries in the kingdom that preserves God, God's people is favor. Can I speak over your life? In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, you belong to a family that has been marvelously helped by God. I pray experience favor. I pray for you experience favor. Experience favor. Favor from the north. Favor from the south. Favor from the east. Favor from the west. Two more prayers. I want to place a grace on you that causes those who need what you carry to look for you. In the name of Jesus, whether it is an anointing or a gift, a skill, any kind of value that can make you to be of demand and to live a rewarded life, I stir up that gift by the grace of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, let those who have an appreciation for what you carry, I compel them to locate you. I compel them to engage you. And I compel them to reward you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, let me pray for your spiritual life and your work with God. At times of political economic turbulence, we call them perilous times. Many believers, if they do not manage their, their faith process, they find out that their spiritual lives begin to decline either because of laxity or discouragement. Anytime things look like it is not the way you want economically, politically and otherwise, that is not the time to run away from the things of God. It is a time to run closer for the Bible declares that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. It says the righteous man runneth to it and he is saved. Let me pray for your prayer life. Let me pray for your word study life. Let me pray for your appetite for spiritual things. It will not go down. 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 In the name of Jesus. This week, I release you a sign and a wonder. I release you a savior. I release you a witness. I release you ambassadors of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. May no one despise the anointing and the mantle upon your life. For in Jesus' name we pray. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.